In this video, I'm gonna show you how to rough wire a kitchen. So we're gonna be going over receptacle height, the correct distance per code away from the kitchen sink, etc. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh, the channel's all about building your house name and ton of money, so be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. We got a lot to go over today, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you the correct height in which to place this outlet and the reasoning why you do so. So let's pull the camera up closer so you can see what I'm talking about. This is an 18 cubic inch outlet box, and this is a single gang because we're just doing one outlet. And this measurement right here is gonna be the top of the countertop, which ends up being 37 inches off the rough floor to right at that mark. So as you can see, there's the outlet, and this mark is going to be the bottom of the upper cabinets. And this measurement between this mark and this mark is typically 18 inches. So if you go ahead and place your outlet box at 48 inches to the top of the outlet, that's the correct height off a rough floor. Now, if the floor was finished, you'd wanna go ahead and move this measurement down to 47 inches since you already have a finished floor. But if you're gonna be roughing in electrical, I assume you have a rough floor. This kitchen I'm building is an L-shaped, and as you can see, I got outlets placed every so often across the kitchen. And this is one side of the kitchen, then this is the other run on the other side of the kitchen. And I'm gonna go over to the whiteboard and explain to you how I got these distances and why they're placed where they're placed. Before we begin Kitchen Outlets 101, I just wanted to disclose that I am not a licensed electrician. I am somebody who's built my own houses. I have built four of them on my own and have wired all of them. They have all passed inspection. And these notes that I'm about to give you are what I have done and have learned trial and error. You know, a couple inspections I had to have tweaked, so I wrote down the reason why I had to add an outlet or take one and move it. So this is what I came up with. And again, check with your local building codes before you do any project and get the proper permits and talk to inspectors or anybody in the trades that you need to to find out details in your area. But here are my notes from my area, so let's go over those. Okay, so in Kitchen Outlets 101, the first rule is outlets can be no more than 48 inches apart. So whenever you're going through spacing your outlets across your kitchen, you wanna make sure you have them at least 40 inch, 48 inches or closer, but you don't want them any farther apart than that. And when you come to a corner in a kitchen, if you have an L-shaped, I like to go only about two foot from those corners, if that, just cause I know sometimes you'll have appliances or something you need to plug in that's in the corner of the kitchen and there's gonna be an outlet there for you if you do so. So I don't think there's a code for having two foot away from the corner, but I usually do that. All right, and the next rule that I play by is you must have an outlet 24 inches from a sink on each side. So there was a house I built last year. I had to add a outlet beside the kitchen sink after I built it. It was like 28 inches from the edge of the sink. So I had to go through and move wires and then put an outlet and then redo drywall. It was a pain in the butt. So, so I will always remember to put an outlet 24 inches from each side of the sink. So if you're standing in the middle of the sink, go to the edge, and this comes from the cutout, by the way, not the sink base, the sink base cabinet. So go, has to be within that 24 inches from each side of it. And next rule we have, if it's a 12 inch countertop, you must have an outlet. So any countertop over 12 inches wide, which I never ran into this, but I've always known this to be a rule, it has to have an outlet, at least that's the way it is in my area. So if you have a 13 inch countertop for whatever weird reason, um, you need to have an outlet uh, up above that countertop. Okay, so the next thing is you uh, must have two 20 amp circuits, a left and a right when you wire your kitchen. So I'm gonna show you in my kitchen here in just a minute, but, and whenever you have a L-shaped or um, a run of outlets, let's say it's on a straight wall and there's no corner, you just gotta find a way to break up the kitchen a left and a right. So again, the L-shape's perfect because it's typically right in the middle and um, that's just the easiest way to do it. And just so you know, if you break, well, when you break it up to left and right, because it's code right now, you can go off one side and add your island outlets to one of those sides, one or the other. You don't have to run another circuit just to power your outlets. So that's one thing that's nice about that. 
And let's go to the next thing. And so, yeah, so when you run a, for a 20 amp circuit, be sure to use 12 wire and uh, don't use any smaller gauge when you do a 20 amp circuit. All right, so outlets have to be at least 20 inches above the countertop. They can't be more than that. So you gotta have them below that, which is fine because typical height of uh, upper cabinets, which I said earlier is 18 inches. So you shouldn't be setting your upper cabinets any higher than that anyways. All right. And then the next thing you need to know is you must protect that circuit with arc fault and GFI. So the best thing to do here is just get a combination breaker. And what a comb combination breaker is, it includes your arc fault and GFI in one breaker. So you don't have to put a GFI outlet and then an arc fault breaker, it's just all in one, which that's the way to go. Which nowadays, I had an inspector tell me the other day, he actually recommends just buying arc fault GFI breakers and doing the whole house that way because it's just way easier, less complicated, but uh, I still break it down because it saves a little bit of money, but just FYI. So make sure you get a combination breaker to protect the left and right side of your kitchen. And over here, as far as the island goes, you wanna make sure you have an outlet 12 inches from the, from the top of the countertop. So if you are sitting on top of the countertop or looking down at it, if you measure down from the top of it, it has to be in that 12 inch range. So that way, if you're sitting at the island, I guess it's just easier to reach over and plug in is what I'm assuming. So that's just something to keep in mind. So this is uh, the rules I live by when I'm doing my kitchen outlets. So now let's go over and keep running some wires. So this outlet here, this is going to be for your refrigerator. And this refrigerator is going to be GFI protected because we got a water source that's close to it. If your refrigerator does not have a water source for an ice maker or a water dispenser, check with your local building codes. You may not need to have a GFI protected because of that. But this outlet needs to be also a home run right to your panel box. What I mean by home run is you're going to wire it and then you're going to go ahead and run it straight to your panel box. You're not gonna put more than just this outlet on that circuit. Now I wanna show you some things about the microwave. If you look here on the wall behind me, this says range. That's just your cooktop or your oven, and I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. So everybody knows for the most part that you have a microwave setting above your range. That's the most common design in America. So with that being said, when you go to rough in your kitchen, you wanna make a home run coming from the wall where your microwave is going to be straight to your panel box and you don't put it in an outlet box yet because it's going to be placed in an outlet box inside of the kitchen cabinet where the microwave is going to be secured to so what you want to do is just go ahead and staple this to a stud that's in the vicinity and then run it straight to your panel box and then you're going to place it inside the cabinet when you're when you go to install it and that does not have to be gfi protected unless it's six feet away from your kitchen sink or any water source. All right, this is where my kitchen sink's going to be. And you guys might recognize this from my previous videos on how to pressure test plumbing. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out up above. It's a good video. All right, so we all know that a dishwasher needs to be to the left or the right of your kitchen sink. So with that being said, in order to wire that, we're gonna do a direct hard wire to the appliance. In my area, that's okay to do as long as the circuit's GFI protected via GFI breaker. And all you gotta do to do that is, let's say this is the edge of the kitchen cabinet here for your sink. We just need to come over a few inches, drill right through the floor next to the wall and run it straight to the panel box. And it's gonna be on its own dedicated circuit, which means its own breaker. And again, make sure it's a GFI breaker and you need to put a lockout on that breaker so an electrician can lock out that breaker so no one can kick it on since it's hardwired right to the appliance. And again, make sure you use 12-2 wire for your 20 amp circuit, just like the microwave, just like the refrigerator, and just like the whole kitchen. Let's move on to the range. 
All right, guys, this is where the range is gonna be placed. And in order to wire an outlet for a range, you need to put it in a double gang box or a two gang box, whatever you wanna call it. You need to get what's called 6-3 wire. That's six gauge wire and it's gonna run right to your panel box in a home run. It's gonna be a dedicated circuit just for that outlet. And you're gonna be wiring it to a 50 amp breaker. So I'll show you how to do all of that in another video, but I just wanted to let you know how you wire for a range and I'd show you the wire if I had some on hand, but I don't. So that's how you wire a range. All right guys, so here is the L-shaped kitchen I'm building. So if we come over here, this is going to be the left side. So this is going to be on its own circuit. So as you can see, I'm going to continue this run because there's only one single wire as you can see. And it's going to go down through under the floor and come up to the island. So this is going to be the left side of the kitchen. And then over here, we have an outlet. As you can see, no more than four foot away. This one's only 32 inches away. And then we got the range right here. So there's no outlets there. And then this outlet and this outlet is four foot apart, which is actually a little less, which that's what you want for code. And then right here, the refrigerator starts. So this outlet's going to be right on the end there. And then this run over here, same song and dance, the power is gonna be coming in here. And I just do all the home runs last, so that way I can go buy exact enough wire to finish up the wiring job, but that's for another video. But this is going to get the home run ran right to it from the panel box, and it's going to power these receptacles, and then we're gonna end at this switch. So before I talk about switches, I just wanted to show you this issue I had here. So right here's the center of the sink. So from here to the sink base edge, that's the sink cabinet where it's gonna end, it puts me right at my 20, a little less than 24 inches, which is just code if that was the edge of the sink, but that's the sink base. And most 32 inch sinks, as you can see, is going to end right there, which would have put me beyond the two foot mark. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to get a 36 inch sink so it ends right here. And that way, this is going to be only 23 inches away. So that meets code right there, actually a little less. So I'm just gonna to have to get a bigger sink to meet code because if I don't, I gotta mount an outlet sideways horizontally instead of vertically like typical to meet code to get it closer to the sink. So I really don't like the looks of that. So that code issue is going to be resolved by getting a bigger, bigger sink. And then far as switches goes, the run of the countertop's gonna end right here, then a pantry. So I just put a double gang box here. So one's for the island, One's for the kitchen lights, the, re, the recessed lights. I'm gonna show you how to install it in another video. It's going to go in an L shape through here. So that's where that's gonna be. And just put that somewhere comfortable for you. And then over here, I'm going to do a three-way switch to the island lights. And there's gonna be a switch right here that's gonna power the island lights up above. So I hope that gives you a good idea of a, something that you might wanna do for your kitchen rough-in job. When it comes to lighting, I'm going to be installing these halo recessed lights and I'm going to make a whole video on how to do that because I know it's a pretty common subject and I know a lot of people are going to want to know how to do it. So that's what the lighting is going to be going around the kitchen here in the island. It's going to be uh, done using one of those saddle boxes that I did in my previous video, just holding a uh, light. So that's going to be over the island and those do not get placed on the receptacle runs. Those will be placed on another circuit. You do not tie those in with your kitchen outlets. Just so you know, and again, check with your local building codes with everything I said in this video, because the codes change all the time in different counties, different states, all require something different. I just told you everything that is done in my county. All right, guys, I hope you found a lot of value in this video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to ask them in the comment section below. Check out my Amazon store in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.